Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Today on the show, we have Mike McGlone, the Senior Commodity Strategist for Bloomberg joining us again. But before we bring Mike on, I'm just gonna quickly remind you to tap on that subscribe button by hitting that red subscribe button below me there so you don't miss out on our content. Hey Mike, welcome back to The Dive. Hello, Cassandra. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us again. Okay, so about every two weeks, Bitcoin resets how tough it is for miners to mine. With this sentiment and China's hostility towards mining, how do you think Bitcoin impacts the U.S. dollar? Well, that's a unique thing about what's happening in the crypto space. The U.S. dollar is gaining dominance through crypto digital asset trading. So most widely traded Crypto on the planet is Tether, very controversial, but it's a digital version of dollar. It's an Ethereum token. You see the trickle up there. That's part of the value of digitalization of assets, the value of um, crypto assets and the digitalization where it's going. So I, I look at it as I think the U.S. Congress is finally starting to figure out this space is actually really good for us because it's showing the U.S. is actually crushing China digitally. China's pushing back. The U.S. is, okay, the regulation might not be so good, but hopefully we'll figure out the regulation. But the digitalization of assets, yes, it's, it's great for Bitcoin and Ethereum, things like Cardano. I think that's still bullish. But what's happening is uniquely, uh, I'll end on this, Cassandra, uniquely the world, this is probably one of the best examples of free market capitalism on a global scale ever. And the space has all decided, fine, we want dollars. We're going to transact in dollars, and we're probably more likely to use Bitcoin as a global reserve asset, and the dollar as a global global currency. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about central bank digital currencies. China's ECNY and the United Kingdom's Bitcoin are being developed. What do you think capital allocators or investors should be focused on in regards to CBDCs? Well, the world's going there. It's a matter of time. The first fact is. The world's already adopted the dollar digitally as a global reserve digital um, currency. It's happening rapidly, as I pointed out earlier. China's just trying to catch up, but no one in the world wants to touch the China's yuan unless they have to. Remember, China doesn't really uh, import, they export uh, mostly. They import some. Um, and then they steal your intellectual property, which has been the problem with both administrations. So that's what's happening uniquely is China's trying to catch up to what's happening organically from the bottom up in the world that's a grasp the dollar. So the rest of the world says, OK, fine, we have to be like that. You know, maybe I'll be like the sand dollar in, in Bahamas, but it's just a matter of time. It's like analog, uh, the old analog headset or handset telephones and landlines all going to digital. Um, you know, we have these um, this, these wonderful high tech devices that are um, you know, have the windows to the world at, at our fingertips anymore. To me, that's where the whole world's going of money. And CBDCs, most notably China, they're just trying to catch up. The U.S. might just regulate what's already happening, get a connection between things like Tether and some of these other um, digital do dollars, connection with a bank, and boom, you're already set. Why have to? Why should the central bank do itself? And then also, it has it kind of solves some of those issues of privacy. Mm -hmm, makes sense. Okay, so let's talk about the recently passed infrastructure bill in the Senate. There was a regulation in the bill stating that any broker of cryptocurrencies would have to provide information to the IRS. How do you see this affect the crypto market? Well, it's actually been the major pushback, as you mentioned, because it's how they defined a broker, which included people who have no contact or information about their people they might be transacting it. So they're trying to enforce something that's unenforceable. So I think it, the way I look at it is the crypto market looked at it is, yes, OK, they didn't really get this one right, but they went down the rabbit hole. And that's the unique thing that a lot of us have been in this space. You know, some of us did it 10 years ago when we initially thought it was silly and internet money. And then they're going down that rabbit hole of knowledge and understanding it. So the good news is I look at it as, OK, we're embracing with regulation. The first push attempt at regulation might not be good. Taxes are part of it. Yeah, OK. We'll get that, but it's not the, what China, it's the exact opposite of what China is doing. So, and that's, they're not laws yet. It still has to be passed, still has to be signed into place, and it just completely mobilized the whole crypto space. And the unique thing about it, not only is the uh, US regulators going down that rabbit hole and they're realizing that this is very unique. And as Kathy Wood says, no one wants to mess it up. So there's a little pushback. But um, to me, the key point is 
this is the moving forward of the whole space. And the key thing I'll end in is crypto coders and traders will always be ahead of the regulators, whatever happens, because that's what they're, they're just catching up now, the uh, regulators. So that's what it kind of triggered to me. This is unstoppable. They're not going to be able to stop Bitcoin other than, cut, other than cutting off the internet. That's the only way to really stop it. So if you're a smart country like the U.S. typically is, you embrace it, embrace the technology. And I think they're going to realize this is just a job creation machine. And a good way to lose votes is to uh, get the millennials mad at you and millennials like crypto. So you recently wrote a report that Bitcoin is replacing gold. Does this mean we will start to see central bank purchases at some point? Well, that's what Safe Dinamas predicted in his book, The Bitcoin Standard. And the first time I read it, I'm like, just like when I first was introduced to Bitcoin, it's classic human nature, bad. It's silly. It's not going to happen. And every day I go, I think about this and hear about it. Is, I don't know what's going to stop this from happening because it's just prudent, normal money um, diversification for rational people. So, for instance, the way I look at gold right now is you cannot hold or allocate the gold anymore without having some Bitcoin in that space. And that was a key takeaway for me at Bretton Woods, the reset, which I went through last week. And so central banks are some of the largest holders of gold in the world. And all the people in gold get it. You kind of got to have a little Bitcoin in there because it is replacing gold in the world that's going digital. Gold's the analog. So to me, it's almost inevitable. Something has to fail or at some point, at some point, it's going to start triggering. Central banks are going to start having to hold Bitcoin as a reserve asset. To me, it's inevitable. Something I can't predict has to be a major shift in that trend. Otherwise, it's just going that it's, it's it's just a matter of time. You also tweeted that if Bitcoin were to catch up to Ethereum's performance this year, the crypto's price would approach $100,000. What do you see holding Bitcoin back? Or is Ethereum just reaching its fair value? Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a hard say way to define what's holding it back other than um, it's entering the mainstream. Ethereum, people have recognized, is the building block for the entire fintech, um, DeFi infrastructure in the world that's going digital. Um, and Bitcoin's part of that. But to me, that was my latest excuse to show the value of Bitcoin getting to 100 grand. I've used dozens of them since February, actually since last mm -hmm. year. It didn't look so good when it dropped to 30. But that's just my latest simple, simple narrative, Cassandra. And I like the fact that Bitcoin just performs the same 300% this year that Ethereum has, it's at 100 grand. So I think that's where its next plateau is going to be. Questions when it, get there, it gets there, I still think it's going to be this year, but don't hold me on that because that's one thing I have to do, be careful is putting exact, you know, I, I see the price happening, the time is a little, that makes it a little more, um, it kind of narrows the target a little too much that I feel less, less comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, we won't hold you to it. Okay, so we have to ask, earlier this year, NFTs swept the art world by storm and are now becoming popular with games like Axie Infinity. Do you think we've only seen a glimpse of where this is going? What effect do you think NFTs will have on the pricing of Ethereum? Well, to me, that's part of the big reason to be bullish Ethereum because a lot of this is being done on the Ethereum platform. And I deliberately am not too involved in NFTs because there's nothing for me to predict on a macro standpoint other than the trickle down from NFTs is part of the bid um, and keeps the attraction, keeps that price of Ether and the gas of Ethereum bid. So that's the way I look at it. But from a macro standpoint, it's, I, I think it's a wonderful place to be in the sell side of that trade um, because you're making a lot of money. But it, it means the whole infrastructure is shifting to digital. Ethereum's in the prime spot for that. And it's bullish the way I look at it. It's just one of those underpinnings for the price of Ethereum. Okay, so one more thing before I let you go here. Do you care to offer any price predictions for Ethereum by the end of the year? Well, I like what um, Raul Paul said about Ethereum. It's probably tracking Bitcoin 2017, which means Bitcoin peaked around 20 grand. It's a bit high, but I, I've been overlaying that. It's right on, right on track. Ethereum is just about 3,000 right now. And I view Ethereum's heading eventually is probably going to break above that high. It was just about 4,000. I don't see it getting below 2,000. And as far as where it goes, um, it's, it's a bull market. I don't see how much higher. I don't know exact levels, but I do think the support is in. I don't think we get below that 2000. Yes, we could get a risk off event like we had last year, which is just a short term buy. But I do think it's going to get above 4000. And let's cross that bridge once we do pass 4000, which I think is a matter of time. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us again today and sharing your thoughts with us, Mike. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll be back again tomorrow, but in the meantime, consider giving us a like and hitting that subscribe button.